but let us come back to this uh, problem as to how do I now uh, satisfy this requirement or you know uh, get the detector operate in my short noise, short noise limited domain given that my signal power is very low. I want this to dominate or that part to dominate given that my signal power is very low. What can I do? RL I do not have a lot of plates we just discussed because it is limited I mean you have a certain bandwidth. So, you would have kind of optimized your RL. So, you may not have a lot of freedom with RL. What else can you do? You want large power. Okay. Nobody said that that large power should come from the signal itself. So, what you can do is this this is your signal you can put in a local oscillator with large power combine your signal with the local oscillator with a beam combiner allow it to fall on the detector. This is the idea of heterodyne de detection or homodyne detection or essentially uh, coherent detection right. So, this is the idea of coherent detection I will tell you why it is called coherent, but this is coherent detection. Coherent detection can be of two types, one is heterodyne, the other one is homodyne. I will also explain to you the difference in a minute, but what you try to do is you are trying to increase the optical power falling on the receiver by adding uh, light from a local oscillator laser. So, this local oscillator is also a laser another laser. So, that the total power falling on the receiver is high and so the short noise becomes larger than the thermal noise. Okay. So, the only assumption you are making is that the polarization of the incoming signal and the local oscillator are equal. So, what is this photo current going to respond to? It is going to respond to E signal plus E LO the field mod square. Where is this mod square coming from? The detector responds to intensity and how do you find intensity from field? You do mod square. So, the total field falling on the detector is E signal field plus the local oscillator field and as I said local oscillator is just a laser another laser. Okay. And so, now let us try to derive what is this current and what is the SNR of this case. Okay. Start with photo current, let us start with intensity. Intensity is proportional to or let me normalize and say equal to E signal plus E LO. Signal is changing as a function of time, there is a modulation in it, amplitude modulation in it. LO does not have that amplitude modulation, it is a CW laser, continuous wave laser, it is not unmodulated laser mod square. Okay. How do I represent the signal uh, field? Let us say it has uh, amplitude E s, E power j omega s t. Right. This amplitude E s is what is changing as a function of time because of modulation, because you are doing on off keying now plus the signal will have a phase phi s plus I am not looking at propagation I should actually write minus beta z right e power j omega t minus beta z, but I am keeping my reference z as at the face of the detector. So, z equal to 0 at the detector interface. So, I do not really have that z plus E L O is amplitude of the local oscillator e power j omega l o t plus a phase of the local oscillator mod square of this. Okay. Now, uh, I can change this uh, phi s and phi l o and uh, well I can I can actually start expanding this. So, what would be the result of this expansion? It is mod square. So, you multiply this with the complex conjugate. So, if I do that multiplication uh, I get okay, let us write the steps. This 
this times E s conjugate minus j plus E l o conjugate So, the first term is actually giving me mod E s square uh, E l o times E l o conjugate this last two terms is multiplication is going to give me E l o conjugate square plus I get E s E l o conjugate E per j plus conjugate of that. Right. Now, assuming that I do not have any modulation, uh, any phase modulation on E s, it is only amplitude modulation, which means E s and E s conjugate are the same. And E L O is just the continuous wave laser. So, E L O and E L O conjugate are the same. Assuming that, I will get this as E S square plus E L O square plus I can just say this is E S E L O times this is E power j theta plus E power minus j theta. So, that will be twice cos omega s minus omega l o t plus phi s minus phi l o. Okay. So, this is my intensity. So, what is my uh, photo current? that is proportional to intensity and the proportionality constant is your responsivity. So, this is R d times uh, I write in terms of corresponding powers and I say that uh, my power I will approximate as or normalized power is proportional to E s square. I mean there is some area factor there, but I am normalizing everything. right? And I am just saying that this is now P s plus P l o plus 2 root and cos So, it is now turning out that uh, if I am looking at current, photo current, uh, where exactly is my uh, signal? Where, where can I do a demodulation? I can, if I look at this frequency now, right, omega s minus omega l o, which I call as omega i f, right, if I look at the i f frequency now, uh, I can demodulate at my i f frequency and extract my signal. So, P l o this is a d c. If I take an average of it, this is also a d c, but my signal is actually contained as a modulation on my i f frequency. So, I do have, so this is the uh, term which has, which, which we say it has a coherent gain. Right. It this term tells you that at the receiver I am going to get a frequency i f and my information is modulated on that frequency. So, that intermediate frequency is decided by the difference between your local oscillator frequency and your signal frequency. Signal would have been modulated at some frequency 
and then you have a look. What frequencies are we talking about? What are the orders of magnitude of these frequencies we are talking about? What is omega s and what is omega l o? It is a several terahertz, right? Omega s is maybe 1550 nanometer, omega l o could be 1550.08 nanometer. Uh, sorry, lambda corresponds to 1550 nanometer and lambda of the LO laser could be 1550.08 nanometer. Correspondingly, you can find out. So, you can get the information modulated on an IF uh, carrier. But the question is, what is the benefit of doing this? Before we get into the benefit of doing this, what I am now interested is in this uh, term, which is 2 root PS root p l o uh, cos of omega i f t plus that delta phi, where my delta phi is phi s minus phi l o. That is what I had here. Now, I am looking at this term. Uh, is this term going to be a DC or AC? Will I get a signal here? I have taken the average of I have done the mod square. So, my signal is lost. My signal is contained only here. So, it is only this term I can use to extract my signal. Okay. So, these are all DC terms and this is the AC term. So, this is my signal and what we want to check is uh, See, why did we start using a coherent receiver or a heterodyne receiver? Started using it because to increase my, is it to increase my power? I wanted to operate in the short noise limit. Is that happening? I mean, intuitively that is happening, but I can prove it only after calculating the SNR, right. So, the next step is to actually calculate the SNR. Now, but before we go do the SNR, this is where the distinction between the two types of coherent detection happens. You can do it as uh, this detection, you can do it in homodyne or you could do it as a heterodyne detector, homodyne and heterodyne detector. In homodyne detection, your omega i f is 0, whereas in heterodyne detection, omega i f not equal to 0, that is the difference. Meaning, my local oscillator is operating at a center frequency exactly identical to my signal frequency that is homodyne detection. Now, you can ask this question practically how do you do that? How do you make two lasers oscillate exactly at the same frequency? That is very hard. So, typically in systems what we do is we do heterodyne detection. If you were to do homodyne detection, what would you do? You have to do some kind of uh, phase lock loop to make sure that the uh, optical phase lock loop to make sure that the laser at the low. So, when you say local oscillator, it is local because it is situated at the receiver. So, you have to now take your signal that is coming in. The receiver does not have in principle um, a very good knowledge about the exact center frequency. The receiver will say that okay, it is appearing my signal is in channel 34 of my WDM. Channel 34 would mean a certain center frequency, but in that center frequency, I mean it, channel 34 would mean a band of frequencies and that within that there could be changes in the center frequency. If you want to make it homodyne, you want to make sure that the local oscillator laser is giving you a frequency exactly identical to that of the transmitter frequency. So, that is a little more work, it is not that it is impossible. What you need to do is pick up the signal, throw away its modulation. So, you cannot use the entire signal, you take a part of your signal, throw away its modulation, use that laser, use that light to injection lock another laser. So, like a master slave configuration kind of laser and make your local oscillator laser exactly oscillate uh, with the signal frequency that is work. People have also done I mean this general way of doing it is called as optical phase lock loop right. So, that is still a nice research area how do you make a very good optical phase locked uh, loop. So, that can be taken up as a project if somebody wants to, uh, but practically we use uh, heterodyne receivers because it is very hard to get two lasers 
uh, oscillate exactly at the same frequency. Another practical way of solving this problem is that uh, people have done what is called as uh, polarization multiplex transmission, where on the x polarization you put your signal, on the y polarization you do not put a signal. Okay. So, in the x polarization you have data and in the y polarization same frequency. So, you take the laser split into two, in one polarization you modulate your signal, the other polarization you do not modulate and then you propagate through the fiber. So, what does the receiver see? Of course, the receiver will see a mix of both, but there is one component which is unpolarized. Uh, but Remember the condition for coherent receiver is that you want the uh, you can do E s plus E l o mod square only if they are of the same polarization. So, what you do is you extract the C w, rotate its polarization, bring it back to x polarization and then allow them to beat on the detector. Okay. So, you send x and y, you extract your y polarization use a polarization controller to rotate it back to x polarization, then allow it to beat on the detector. That is one way of solving uh, or getting a homodyne detection. Right? So, several ways are people are doing, right? it is still desirable to do a homodyne detection. You will realize why it is desirable to do homodyne detection than a heterodyne detection in a minute again. No, same frequency of the local oscillator is not mode lock laser. Uh, mode lock laser is a completely different concept, where you are uh, locking the longitudinal modes of a given laser, so that the laser does not uh, oscillate as a uh, CW, it starts giving you pulses. So, this is related to our laser theory, laser has lot of longitudinal modes. right? So, in the frequency domain there are several modes in the system several frequencies in the system. So, in the time domain what should it be? If I have uh, this is detour from our uh, uh, this. So, in the frequency domain you have several modes in a laser, time domain should it should be what? Should be a pulse no, but do you get a pulse from a laser. So, coming back to uh, uh, coherent detection, it is easier to do heterodyne detection. So, many practical systems use heterodyne detection, but uh, let us first talk about homodyne detection. Uh, the question is why cannot we use a amplifier at a receiver to do what? So, okay, if I use an am electrical amplifier at the receiver, can I increase the power and thereby increasing the signal to noise ratio? noise will also increase. right? So, whenever I use an amplifier, my signal power will increase, but my SNR will always degrade. And uh, the next topic is how to relate SNR to the uh, bit error rate. You will realize that the error that I get, I mean you already have an intuition, the error that I get is not just related to the noise, it is also related to the signal power divided by the noise power will exactly quantify that. So, my objective is always to not get a specific uh, signal power, the objective is also always to get a specific SNR right? for my communication system to work. So, I can use amplifier, but that is going to degrade my SNR. 